Well, hello, everyone. So great to have you with us, with me. It's not us, it's just me. Um, can somebody, we're going to, I'm going to take your questions. I've got some information for you, and I want to tell you what we're doing with Flourish. But just to make sure everybody can hear me, can you guys, um, somewhere on your screen, you see the question mark? Just go to that question mark, and I'm just looking for one person to even drop in there. I can hear you, or your sound's all good, just so I know before we get started. Um, I had some technical problems since Friday, so just go up to that question. If somebody could let me... Okay, great. You guys can hear me. Thank you, Jamie. I appreciate it. Okay. So welcome, everybody. I am so glad that you are with me this evening. Um, we are, we've got a special topic. It's freezing outside, at least where I am. I'm in Cincinnati, and I know we have people all over the country on with us. So welcome, um, especially those of you that are in great weather. We are freezing here. So um, we're going to talk about summer. So maybe that'll warm us up a little bit coming off the Super Bowl. So we're going to talk about summer opportunities today. We're going to talk about how students can plan for a purposeful summer and in that summer, move them towards career clarity because our goal at Flourish is to set up teens and young adults to know themselves, know careers, and pick their paths so that they can launch into Flourish. That's what we're passionate about. So many of you know us through my original brand for the last 22 years that's still around and going strong, but we're gonna double down under a new name and have two brands that I'm working with. And Flourish is where we're all about career clarity. So welcome, I'm glad you're joining us in the conversation. So what are we doing? Well, we're gonna have a monthly webinar. We're gonna try this for a bit. We started in January. And in January, we talked about how do you choose your classes for high school course selection aimed at getting career clarity. So that's what we talked about last month. If you missed that, what we do every month is um, we post the recording inside a private Facebook community that we have. Anybody can join it. Um, all you have to do is ask. And so over there, it's called Launch Career Clarity. It will be in your follow-up email. And if you missed uh, joining us in January, you can hop over there and under the video section, you're able to watch what we had to share. I had actually a guest with us uh, last month, Drews Mitchell, who works with me. And he's a, he doubles as a career counselor with Flourish and a school counselor. So he was able to weigh in and give us his great thoughts on that as well. So um, after today's webinar this week, we'll get that over in our launch community. So join us over there, invite your friends. We would love to have you. So every month, my plan is, as long as you guys keep joining me, is that we will have a timely topic that I will speak on for maybe 15 or 20 minutes. And then we're going to have Q&A, anything related to helping teens and young adults get career clarity is good to go during our Q&A. What I'm not here for is to talk about college selection, uh, finding trade schools. I'm not here to talk about applying to college. There's lots and lots of people working in that space to help you. The space that we're in, Doubling Down with Flourish, is one that we don't think a lot of people are in. They're walking this out as a coach. So that's what we want to do with you all. Um, sometimes we'll have invited guest speakers with me on those. So every day we continue the conversation in our launch group. So you guys can post questions over there. You can participate. We, we want to hear from you. So join us over there as well. So today, the topic at hand is looking at those options that we have this summer. I want to say something about um, Tom Brady. Oh, my word, was that amazing. Um, I was on a group webinar with people from, I actually have a coach myself. So I'm here coaching you guys, but um, I have a coach myself. So we were on a, a big group call this morning and we were just thinking about Tom Brady and I thought, gosh, this guy's relentless. He's focused and he makes time and, and has a plan and has attention to what he wants to do. Do you know that he sleeps nine hours a night? He eats extremely healthy. 
He's given up weightlifting. One would think that he would use weights. He doesn't. He wants to protect himself. So he only works out with resistance bands to protect his muscles from tears and damage so he can still perform his best. And that old guy, he's doing great. I guess he's also taught us that it's you're never too old, right? So I think that we've got some great tips from him that uh, we can we can learn. So just stay focused and don't quit would be what I have to say. So we've got several categories that we wanna talk about today. If you, while I'm talking, have questions, um, go ahead and drop them into the question feature. We did take a lot of questions earlier via direct message or some of you emailed us at info at flourishcoachingco.com. We're always happy to engage with you there as well. So, um, Pay to play, and one of our questions came in about pay to play. So pay to play is really where there's a, a summer program. Most of these are on college campuses. Often those opportunities are actually put on by the college. However, I know that I, I was looking at one uh, with a client just a couple weeks ago. It was around like marine biology and zoology. They were using, they're going to use the University of Washington, Washington State campus, but it's an outside group is actually renting it. So when you look at pay to play experiences, even if they're held on the campus, they're not necessarily always put on by the college. Keep that on mind. Um, and then as we know, again, for 2021, there are going to be a lot of virtual opportunities. Um, and they still cost money. So these pay to play, um, and you know what, one of our questions was, is it worth it? That's a question and I won't hold it till the end. Somebody emailed us and said, I would like to know tonight, a lot of these seem to have a really high cost, is it worth it? So I, the whole process of figuring out career, all your high school activities, applying to college if you're going to college paying for college very expensive so you've got to keep your budget in mind certainly um, these pay to play experiences aren't necessarily worth breaking the budget if it means that you're not going to be able to afford a college later one thing that i want everybody to keep in mind is that this does not if let's say that you go to I don't know, Duke University for an in-person or virtual experience and you pay thousands of dollars to take advantage of that. Are you going to get an admission edge at Duke University? The answer is no. Um, one of the things you have to remember is college campuses are empty all summer long. They're like deserted islands and they've got all of these empty dorms and empty buildings. So if they can get people on campus paying, that really helps with the budget. So while these can provide really fantastic experiences for students, um, it, it is a moneymaker for the college. It's not an admission strategy for them. I mean, they hope you'll come there and you'll fall in love with their campus and you'll apply and maybe you'll even attend there. That is their hope. But by coming to their camp or whatever their experience is, or even doing it virtually, it's not going to further your case of getting into that school. So you're still going to be evaluated equally with all the other students. So I'm not against these. I mean, it can give students a great chance to experience what campus life is like and how great dorm food is or not. I feel like there's only one school, it was Colorado College, they had actually really fantastic food. Um, I love their food, but most college campuses, we know the food's not terrific. You know, what's it like to live in a dorm? So um, a lot of times you're doing a deep dive on um, a curricular area that you're really, the student's really passionate about. That's fantastic. So I'm not against these at all, but you do need to consider your budget. I wouldn't pursue these. Um, I wouldn't pursue these if it's gonna hurt your budget for other things that you need to do or paying for college in the future. Because I think there are plenty other things that we are able to do during the summer to give us great experiences and further career clarity. So let's look at the next one. The next one is internships. 
So they do exist for high school students. And I've got some examples for you. I want to tell you guys some stories tonight of students that I've worked with in the past. Um, so ch parents, check with your employer. If you work for a company, see if they are open to high, if they actually have a structured program of paid or unpaid internships for high school students. If they are open to entertaining that idea if they don't have one um do they have anything available so one student that i had he checked with his dad checked with his employer and the student actually was hired on the student was interested in computer science and they were doing a project that summer where they were rewiring everything for um for it connectivity and upgrading their wiring um, they hadn't necessarily thought that they would hire any high school interns but they went ahead and hired ben to do that and he was part of a team that did that and um, got paid not a ton but he got paid um, didn't take him the whole summer but it did give him valuable work experience you know part of the thing with internships are you're in a more corporate or you're in a work setting or in a professional setting you are they know that you're engaging and interacting with adults so you're working on those soft skills that employers love to see as well you're responsible you show up so even if it's a one-week internship these can be fantastic I would also check with your high school, check with your school counseling office. Um, I know one local high school here in my area actually has someone that does, they don't call them internships, they call them externships, where they, they have a position of somebody who helps connect students with businesses and uh, medical facilities that are looking for students to take, they'll take on interns, paid and unpaid. Um, I know another a private high school here has a parent organization. Um, I think it's called like Connection with an X because it's St. X High School. And they help facilitate, it's run by the parents, they help facilitate making those connections. That particular high school, actually, I remember last year, one of my students, I had said, go check your high school. They had a paid high school internship with a group called Jurgisons. And um, it was in the IT sector. And that was a paid internship that lasted most of the summer. And that was fantastic. Um, another thing to do, check with local organizations. Here in the greater Cincinnati area, we have this fantastic organization called Inner Alliance. It's all about exposing teens to IT. They actually have um, companies that they have designated internships with every single summer. And you know, one of their requirements before you they will even allow you to apply for their internships, they actually require that students must have a LinkedIn profile that looks professional and that they get approved by this organization. So that is one of the steps um, in even being able to apply. I, I posted it in our Launch Career Clarity private Facebook community. And I've said, we've got a, um, like a template that tells students how to put in a LinkedIn page. We're happy to give it to anybody. Um, just email us at info at flourishcoachingco.com and we will get that to you. And then I always tell students, once you do that, go ahead and connect with me on LinkedIn. I interacted with a young lady last week. Uh, she reached out to me and I said, hey, I looked at her page, gave her a couple tips on how to improve it. I said, it looks fantastic, good for you. So having a LinkedIn presence is something that will help students um, look more professional, stand out from their peers because I'm telling you, it is the rare student who actually takes the time to put together their professional looking LinkedIn profile. Um, you know what, I read an article this week that said now almost two thirds, so 65% of college admissions officers think it is completely fair game to go out there, crawl all methods of social media 
and see how kids are representing themselves and that is a factor in them getting in. So I always tell students, lock down you know, your Snapchat, your Instagram, the stuff that you're doing with your friends and have a channel where you're putting on your professional face because you're gonna have to be that person for the rest of your life. So highly recommend. Um, and then you can go ahead and Google for internships. Google, you know, your area. So I know we have some people in the greater Philadelphia area with us this evening. So if you wanna Google, you know, uh, Philadelphia high school inter summer internships, see if that brings anything up. I actually found something in the greater Cincinnati area um, when I did that just last week. Go ahead and go directly on the website of companies. Um, you know, reach out. It, and we're going to talk in a second about um, how to make these connections and do an ask to create your own. So see if there are actual internships available and um, apply for those internships. I, last summer, I had students of mine who did in-person internships. Last summer, 2020, things were locked down. And they were still going in person to both Procter and Gamble and Jurgensons. So, um, I, I, you know, things are going to be more open this year in 2021. I know there's still a lot virtual. We have a long way to go, but um, and I'm going to give you some ideas on that. But not everything's going to be shut down. So, take a look there. Again, for those of you that are just joining us, I know we have some people that hopped on late, and that's completely fine. Please put your questions in the question feature, and I will try to get to them. I'm really mindful of your time. My goal in our monthly webinars is that we have, you know, I'm already at almost 20 minutes, but we have a period of teaching time, and we have a period of Q&A, and then I let you guys go. So, okay, the next idea, job shadows. So job shadows, uh, these obviously, I'm going kind of from easy to more complicated, right? So if you're going to do a pay to play, that's probably something that already exists. Yes, you probably have to apply for it, but um, somebody else has already in, it organized it. It's well organized. Internships, pretty well organized as well. Job shadows puts the onus on the student, not the parents. They want to hear from the students. The students are the ones that are figuring out what they want to do for the rest of their lives. So it's on the student to make the job shadows happen. Job shadows, I think, are fantastic. I think it can, it can give you, whether it's a one day, even a half day, one week, a job shadow lets a student see something in action. Um, I encourage students when they do job shadows to you know, our mantra is know yourself, know careers, pick your path, right? So on the knowing yourself part, as you get to really know yourself, and I'm, and I'm developing a freebie for you guys that's um, conversation sparks to help students know themselves better. So we'll be getting that out here in the near future. Um, but as students know themselves, I always say, go ahead and like make a list of questions that you would ask somebody when you're doing a job shadow. And those are through the lens of what your wiring is. So um, I was talking to a student today and he said, you know, I, he's like, I'm just being honest. I am more introverted. I'm not totally introverted, but I'm more introverted. I find myself sometimes to be socially awkward. I guess I just am. I'm going to own that. I didn't actually find him to be that socially awkward, but he feels that he is because I want a job that, you know, I don't have to have tons of people contact. Little bit's good, not tons. So I said, you know what, you, when you're assessing a career, if you do some job shadows this summer, this is what we're going, going to talk about tonight. I said, that's okay. Just say like, how much public contact do you have? How, how much are you with people you don't know at all? And how much are you with people that um, you're super familiar with? And so it's okay. Some of us, I've got a job that requires talking all the time and others of us are well suited for jobs that they get to stay focused and on task. If I don't have that people contact, I'm not comfortable in my skin. Other people are the opposite of me. No one weighs the right way. We wanna make sure that the jobs fit. So with job shadows, I'm gonna give you guys um, just kind of a rule. Proximity is king, okay? You've gotta get proximity. 
And this might, this is, I'm going to tie this back into our Tom Brady um, talk from the beginning. That guy is focused and relentless. He doesn't quit. And I would say that really and truly on setting up a job shadow, it might take you nine no's before you get to a yes, but there are no quitters, no quitters. Okay. Or there, I'm telling you not to quit. You know, there are no, nobody's going to fail at this. If you keep going, you can only fail if you quit. So don't quit. If it takes 10 asks, 12 asks, keep asking. You know, a lot of times I hear, well, I'm, they, I might be bothering them or they might say no. They might. What's the worst thing they're going to do? Say no. You look super mature for having a professional LinkedIn presence and reaching out and they are going to remember that. So proximity. If you can't get a seat actually at the table, say an internship, get in the room, serve the water and Make that the best darn glass of water they've ever had. That's what you do when you show up for a job shadow. So a job shadow, what can I do? Can I file things? Can I, em can I empty things and throw it away for you? Can I bring you water or coffee? But if you're in the room, you get to see how that job operates. You just sponge it up. You look at what people are doing. So now, where do we start? Well, start with your parents. You know, ask your parents, do, you, do we know as a family anybody who can, who works in this area, who I maybe could approach? Uh, somebody just said, are there more slides? Nope, I don't do a lot of slides because I like to keep it on content. So yeah, we're stuck on the we're one slide. I'll have one more slide in a second. So it's mainly me talking about these things, sorry. Um, so uh, I just don't take the time to put a lot of slides together for these presentations. So um, what I want you guys to think about is who do we know? So start with your parents, start with your aunts, uncles, grandparents. Do you know anybody who does this job? Last summer, I had a student who got two job shadows in logistics, and it was just through uh, two different family members that knew somebody who was in supply chain management or logistics, okay? then ask them for an introduction, it, be it via LinkedIn or via email. Now, I have a framework, students, for when students ask, you guys are gonna wanna jot this down, parents and students and those of you working, we have, we have a lot of people in our group who work in the space um, of working with teens and young adults. So here's your framework for doing that ask when you wanna get a job shadow, even if you've gotta send this 12 different times. So, you know, Dear Mr. or Mrs. So-and-so, number one, state who you know, even if that person already did the introduction, you know, so-and-so said you're super talented or well-connected or been very successful at being an XYZ. And I appreciate them making the connection. So it's who you know. Next thing is, what do you want? You're asking for a job shadow. You can be flexible whether it could be for a half day, a full day, or several days, you would love to come in and offer up even your assistance if they would take it and to at least talk to them about their job. Tell them why. Tell them what you know about that field and that you're considering that field and you feel that you need to see this in action and talk to those people that are doing it so that you can get career clarity before you get out of high school. Next rule, when you reach out to somebody, studies show that if you ask between one and three questions, ask at least one, not more than three, there is a higher likelihood that someone's going to give you a response. One to three questions. So one of them is, can I come in? You can then go ahead and ask them something else about their job, okay? Next, either include a not more than one page resume, or give them the link to your LinkedIn profile in the body of your email, or maybe you're already connecting with them just via LinkedIn. So get that polished LinkedIn profile. Remember, if you need our guide, email us, ask for that. We will get it to you, or you send us a direct message in the um, launch Facebook community. We will get that out to you. Um, so, and, and show them your professional presence on LinkedIn. And then when you end your email, the email close that gets the best response rate is thank you in advance. 
thank you in advance, and then your name. Pretty simple. So one to three questions. Start with who you know, why you want to do a job shadow, asking one to three questions, linking to your uh, LinkedIn profile, thanks, thank you in advance is how you end it. That will get you a better chance at getting a response. If you don't get a response, no big deal. Here's the other thing. I would not say, you know, this reminds me, my daughter is in college and they are looking for housing for next year. And when she first started this with her friends, they did, they would apply for one, wait to hear, oh, they didn't get it, somebody beat them to it. Then they'd go on to the next one. And I finally said, you know what, Sid? I think a great idea would be if you just go ahead and look for a whole bunch of them and take what comes up first. Cast a wide net. I suggest that our students do the same when they're looking for a job shadow. Okay, now, I mean, I had somebody a couple years ago, um, and actually they have a younger kid now, they might be on today, that their daughter did um, a job shadow of somebody who was a flavorist. So chemist, chemistry background, flavorist, creating drinks with new flavors. And the student actually got to make a, a go, go ahead and make a, a drink of a new flavor. So it was super cool. And then it ended up being, she wrote about it in her college essay about like why she knows she wanted to be a chemical engineer. So, okay, community service would be the next thing that you could do. So with community service, continue serving in a, an existing capacity, or you could ask for a new capacity. Um, one of my students who's a senior this year, Spondina, she had for quite some time, I think like two years or so, been volunteering at a local food pantry here in the Cincinnati area. Um, COVID closed down that opportunity for her. And so she was really disappointed, but uh, Anne felt like she wanted to have a purposeful summer. So she's really interested in um, graphics, design, things like that. So we brainstormed and I said, you know what, Where, what's their social media presence like? Or do they have a newsletter? And they didn't have either of those. I said, what if you, instead of stocking shelves, help them get their message out? And so approach the director and say, hey, can I help at the food pantry in a COVID way, which is I'll create graphics for you to use. I'll help you with some newsletter templates, things like that. And she did that so she could keep giving um, that same student with two of her friends actually last summer started um, a tutoring business. Now, none of the young ladies who started the tutoring business have any intention in going into education. So it wasn't giving them anything like that. They're all smart girls. They were um, tutoring anywhere from elementary to high school kids. They were charging a minimal fee for that and they ended up donating all of the proceeds to an orphanage in India. Um, now, here's what was really huge about what they did. They divided up the business roles of running that organization. So one person was doing sales, one person was doing the financial side, somebody else was doing scheduling, uh, somebody else was doing marketing. So they held the different roles. All of these girls are going into business or some sort of business. And they all wore a hat related to a business function within the community service opportunity that they created. It's fantastic. So they all got a chance to write about it with their college essays. They learned something. Um, it was fantastic. So uh, another student of mine, Sophie. Sophie created something called um, Corona Care Callers last summer to keep kids who were doing school at home connected. Um, I won't go into all the details. You can Google her. She's made the Today Show, local news, national news. And what she did was she has spread her program throughout the United States now. They're, they are, I forget how many cities they're in. Um, I think she and her parents might be on. If they are, they can go ahead and drop me how many cities or states we're in now with Corona Care Callers. So Sophie, while she's not going to do anything with Corona, thank God, for the rest of her life, what has this done? Um, it showed her how to create an organization. It, she's learned, she's had to have lots of um, adult interaction as well. So she sort of got some of that business entrepreneurial experience as well. And now she's replicating it. So create your own, think outside of the box. I realize I started with 
you know, easiest to hardest, but sometimes the hardest ones to put together have the highest values. So keep that in mind. Um, keep going at it, cast, cast a wide net. There are no failures. There are just those that quit. So don't be a quitter. Tom Brady's never quit. Okay, I've got some questions here. Here's one of the, okay, so this one question, oh, okay. Third, Corona Care Collars is now in 13 states and, and 22 school districts. Thank you, Lynn, for I knew you'd probably be on and could tell me that. So that came out of just something that um, Sophie decided to do last summer. And in my estimation, it gave her a lot of entrepreneurial and business type experience. Okay, so I'm going to close out that portion of what we're talking about. But I want to go ahead now and get to our um, Q&A part. So. I'm going to hit some of your questions. Anybody else who has more questions, go ahead and drop them in our question and answer feature. So, uh, okay. High school, pre-college, oh, we answered this one. The mom that thinks these feel really expensive to me when I go to a campus, thousands of dollars, are they worth it? She's like, I'm feeling like they're not, but maybe I'm missing something. I, I see kids get into the most selective colleges and they never do those programs at all. So I don't think that, that those type of experiences have a higher value than some of the other stuff that I'm telling you about. And quite frankly, I would say some of the create your own or gosh, if you got a paid inter internship at Procter and Gamble or something like that, frankly, that might have a much higher value than these on-campus experiences. Now, we did curate a list of all of the on-campus experiences for you guys. We pulled them from about six or seven different sources. Um, when, I think at like an hour after we're off today, um, you will get a follow-up email. That email has a link to our Google, to a Google list. And this was for only live attendees a link for um, the whole list of opportunities that you can get off Google. You go there, you can make a copy for yourself, you can copy and paste whatever. You can't edit our copy, but you, everybody can access what we were able to curate for you guys. We were happy to do so. So, um, you know, thank you to Cassie, my assistant, for putting that together. Cassie's awesome. Okay, next question. Should a student have just one possible major or career identified or a few? In an ideal world, when should a high school junior have this in place? Uh, such a great question. You know, I've got a, a group post that I'm doing later this week that does, I actually sat down and I counted like how many pivots in my own career that I've had over the years, and there were eight. And I'll, I outline them in the um, posts that you guys will get later this week. But here's the deal. Students feel a lot of pressure that they are making a forever decision. So um, what I would say is, first of all, let's take the pressure off, number one. Number two, um, if some of these, some of my students are just, they do their research, they get some of these experiences in and they are confident of their path, at least this first step before their next pivot. I've had eight pivots. So uh, there's a, there are some programs that they would be very difficult to get into if you did not apply to them as um, when you're a senior in high school as you're entering college if you're if you're looking if you're going college bound not everybody on the call is going college bound so I do think that you need to keep that in mind um, some colleges are a bit friendlier to undecided students than others so um, the strategy has always been if you are working with an independent educational consultant lots of great ones out there um, that you would identify probably the toughest major to, if you're narrowed down to two or three, the toughest major to actually transfer into after you've started as a freshman as the one that you apply to initially. Um, a lot of times those really popular majors or majors that have very limited number of seats because they're heavy on labs, uh, engineering, they're heavy on uh, field or clinical experience, nursing, um, health, anything healthcare related, they're not going to have a lot of seats a lot of times open after that initial wave of students come in. So um, if a student can get it down to the one thing, that's great. But also tell them that you know, if they make changes, if you really know yourself, 
you're probably not making crazy wide swings. And I tell my story in our group later this week, so take a look for that. I'm gonna put the glasses on. Um, okay, somebody else said, I've heard you talk of high value and low value extracurriculars. What is the difference? Here's my litmus test for high value and low value extracurriculars. If I say that um, I was an after school tutor, um, I was an after school tutor for middle school students. That's really, everybody knows what that was, okay? That extracurricular is pretty easy. I work at Grater's, the local ice cream shop, for those of you outside of Cincinnati, Oprah's favorite ice cream. Um, Self-explanatory. Let's go back to um, Sophie, Corona Care Callers. What's that? I started a, an organization called Corona Care Callers that is now in multiple states and cities throughout the United States. That requires an explanation. Um, I have twin students who are seniors that I've worked with before, and they started a nonprofit called Adopt a Book Ohio, and they they started when they were in elementary school. It's still going strong. They have donated thousands of books to underserved communities. They started a nonprofit. That requires an explanation. So high value extracurriculars are going to be those that are more aimed at, they're more difficult to explain. So that would be a, a nice test. Okay, let's look at some of these that you guys are sending in and I know I've got a couple others too. Okay, what grade levels would you recommend these activities? Sophomore, junior, especially job shadowing and internships. So I always say that freshmen need to be freshmen. They need to adjust to high school, they very importantly need to keep their grades up and learn how to navigate the increased rigor. They need to figure out where they want to get involved extracurricularly. So take the pressure off freshman year and summer after freshman year. Although last year I met a kiddo who was, we, we talked about this in our um, launch group on Facebook. Uh, he, he has wanted to go into agriculture of some sort um, for a very long time. So he did, I did encourage them to do some things right after freshman year, but um, I would say to the, other than that, like summer after sophomore year, I would get serious about having a really quality summer. Summer after, after junior year um, is even a little bit harder. Some of these opportunities, by the way, are not open to kids who are under 16. Some are not open to kids that are under 18, so keep that in mind. But I, I would say like also keep in mind the summer between the junior and senior year, students are probably working on applying to college um, and they're doing some of these high value experiences. So that summer off after sophomore year is kind of a sweet spot, right? The students are, you know, two thirds of the way done with high school as far as the point at which they'll apply to college and need to identify a college major that they're going to do. They've got some experience under their belt and the summer after the junior year is going to be a busy one. So uh, sophomore, junior, and I would even keep it up the summer after the senior year um, because you know students need to keep focusing on getting that career clarity. Let's see. Oh, okay. A very similar question. Franco, I'm going to, I, somebody right before you had put the same one in. Somebody says, I don't see the previous high school course selection video on the Facebook page. Ah, we have a Facebook page for Flourish Coaching Company. That's just a page. We also have a community. It's a uh, private Facebook group. And Lavanya, you'll get this in our follow up email. Um, that talks that's where we have like discussion and everybody's talking. So join us over there. That's where the videos go. Okay, let me take some more of the questions that were sent in ahead of time since we have a little bit of time left. Um, okay, my daughter, Sarah, wants to take government through CCP. So those of you outside of Ohio, that is dual enrollment so that she can open. So this goes back to our January topic, but I'm happy to answer because anything goes during our Q&A segment, as long as it's related to getting career clarity. Um, so that she can open a spot in her schedule for an elective. Electives are great ways to start to get career clarity. So I do support making space in the schedule 
to take electives that otherwise can't be taken outside of the school day. So in this case, this mom is saying, you know, should she do dual enrollment? The high school's pushing dual enrollment. Um, or sh should she do flex credit, which she could do through BYU? Sounds like you were following some of my advice. Um, the counselor seemed to push the CCP route to get the college experience and boost the GPA. I don't know that taking US government, American government, CCP is going to be that rigorous because it's going to be a really basic class. Um, I'm not a huge fan of worrying about the boost to the GPA uh, with AP or CCP. I don't think that's a good reason to make that choice. Um, I blogged about this on my other site a long time ago. A lot of colleges will take a student's GPA. The more selective the college, the more likely they are to do this. They take the GPA, they get rid of all the fluff. So that means health is out, PE is out, art classes, band, choir, all of it's out. And they look at your core courses, English, math, social studies, science, and foreign language. And they take it back down to not a weighted GPA, but a 4.0 GPA. So I'm not a fan of the GPA game because um, a lot of colleges, most colleges would rather have your unweighted GPA. Um, so I don't think that there's a right or wrong. Um, it's, I'm assuming the person that sent this in that the CCP would be um, after school, like evenings or summer. So um, I don't think it, it's government that it's not like you're pursuing great rigor there. It's just getting a basic government class. So I don't think that there would be um, a mistake there. With band and Spanish, she has not had extra room for any elective. So it sounds like you guys really want to get some electives in. And if those electives can pursue career clarity, I am all for it. How do you feel about AP language? Uh, their other child took AP language, got a three on the exam. She doesn't have plans to use Spanish in the future with her chemical engineering, but you never know. So colleges like to see most of them minimally three years, two is acceptable at the less selective schools. And if you are looking at elite colleges, I actually had to tell uh, this to a family a couple weeks ago, they actually want to see four years and they want to see a language in the senior year. <clears throat> so even if you started in eighth grade, they would want you to stick with it. This mom's worried about the level of rigor though because <clears throat> her daughter's taking ap comp ap calc ap chem and ap spanish and mom says good grief let's not take ap spanish um i think it's going to depend on where you're applying to colleges yeah i'm sorry to say that that's probably not the answer you wanted um okay Let's see, last, I'm making sure I've hit everything here. Okay, I think that's it. A lot of them are, we got a lot of repetitive ones. So, a couple words. Um, <clears throat> keep the conversation going with us over in the launch group. You guys are welcome to post your questions over there. You're welcome to answer our questions that we post. We also post resources over there. Next month, we are going to be one month from today on Monday, March 8th at 7.30 p.m. And what we're going to do is talk about college visits, but not in the way that you think. <clears throat> like I said, Flourish is not about helping you figure out where to go to college, how to apply to college, any of that stuff. We are doubling down on getting career clarity because students, you go to school 16,000 hours, kindergarten through 12th grade, you're going to work 90,000 hours in your adult life. You better do what you love. So what we're going to do next month is talk about what types of college visits that you can, um, what types of college visits you can do that help you get career clarity. It's not the typical visit. And we're going to talk about how to use those visits to really dial down engage with the colleges so that you can start to figure out like, ah, what did I learn about that career by doing this college visit? So I'm going to give you a framework for doing that. I hope that you will join us. Um, somebody just 
said that they joined us late. Can they see this recording? Yes. Join us over in our uh, private Facebook community. Anybody's welcome. You just have to request access. That group is called Launch Career Clarity. Everybody that joined us tonight live is going to get the link to that group. Actually, the anybody who missed it's going to get the link to the group as well. And everybody who attend, attended live, your follow-up email will have the link to the Google Doc that has the highly curated list, pages and pages long, of the pay-to-play and some free opportunities of what you can do this summer. So, oh my gosh, it was great being with you guys again this month. Um, thank you for joining us at Flourish Coaching. And we'll see you over in the Facebook group. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.